What's up, everybody? What's good? It's the Driver Era. Yo, yo. I'm Ross. I'm Rocky. We just did a great interview with Zach Singh. Yeah. And uh, it was awesome. Talked about all sorts of things. Talked about the past, the present, and the future. New record, Girlfriend, coming out. And we're touring soon. Cast the interview to check it out. Yeah. Let's do this. Zach Sang Show. Yeah. Hello, beautiful human. We're here. We got the driver era here. Oh, yeah. But really, the spectacular guest that I care about the most is your dog, which is like, God, I'm obsessed. This is the most distracting for me because it's all I want to talk about. (laughs) But the reality is we have an album to discuss here. And we have something. uh, It's not new because driver era has been existing for a while. But I feel like, is it wrong to say that you're finally uh, not gaining your stride, but understanding what driver era is, especially as it is different than everything else you've done? Yeah. Musically before? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, do you, do you better understand I, who and what driver area is today than before? I mean, yeah. No, I, I feel that. Honestly, we... Uh, that's kind of how the process goes for us. We're always, like, feeling like we're realizing something new with, like, whether it's the music industry or how we, like, produce things or say we're working on a music video or something. It's kind of always a... Like, oh, okay, cool. We're getting better at that. It honestly always is. Um, yeah. You, but we're always trying to like, I think we're always trying to experiment too. Yeah. So I don't know if, I don't know if we're ever like fully settled for anything. It, it's you, hard to imagine we'd be satisfied ever. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of bands just in general that have their thing and they just do their thing. Do you know what your thing is? That's I cool. don't think we. I, I think our thing is experimentation. Our like thing I think is, if our yeah. if we had a genre, it should be experimental. I get that personally. I mean, I don't. Hmm. I, I mean, ultimately, I, we'd love to be pop, like Endgame. Endgame, but it, progressive pop or well, so, something. Yeah, yeah. The truth is, like, pop is a collection of all genres, and I feel like yeah. I've talked to you about this before. Like, yeah. that's my opinion. So it could be whatever the hell you want. It's you know, pop is what's popular. So yeah. mm-hmm. it should be a variety of things. But mm-hmm. I agree. How is this album different than the last? Sonically, if we're experimenting, how is this experiment different? Um, well, we're always playing with chord structures and and melodies that we think are not traditional. Like honestly, yeah. we're, we we have a hard time doing like traditional chord structures in general. Like the one five six four, it's like a it's like a common why musical you, theory thing. Why can't you do you not want to do that or you can do that? It's just kind of, it's just kind of, uh, it, like, uh, it's, it's all, a little too typical yeah, I, for I, us. Yeah. And, and if we stumble upon it, if we like find it accidentally and it happens to be that chord structure well, like, and, and, and it moves us, uh-huh. we'll totally run with it. Uh-huh. But we don't, we don't like start the song being like, cool, this is our structure yeah. and here we go. We are more like, what can we find that makes us want to move in the studio? And then we go off that inspiration. Would you say that the stories on this last album are a little bit more personal than the last? Or maybe maybe I have a better understanding of like what's going on in life and how it's connected. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like even I, the titles are very simplistic, but you kind of get it like in the role it may play in one's everyday existence. Mhm. I definitely yeah, I think this album's probably more personal than the than the last one. The last one was more we were in like a punk rock kind of space where we were singing a lot about like like welcome to the end of your life is like it's kind of like a song about existentialism. It's like, what if you died today? It's 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 that common phrase of um, live every day as if it's your last. Yeah, that's kind of like what that song is about. Whereas this record is more talking about. I mean, there's you still have like existentialism kind of in it, like in Heart of Mine, where it's talking about like great song, the passing of days, and and trying to make the most of life. But there's still like details in there that seem really personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely more personal, I think. I mean, that, I, like number one fan for sure. Yeah. It's, it's like a very personal song. It's for us. It's, it's kind of hard to not um, make music unless it's somewhat personal. Honestly, mm-hmm. like uh, if I'm ever doing any, if I'm writing down words, it's because somehow I'm in like a space where I'm like, oh, this is is really reacting to me, and I'm really f- like feeling that. Other than that, like I don't really like write. Literally, mm-hmm. like we're like, are, is Ross? Are you the one writing mostly? 
or what? It's, 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 well, it's, nowadays, it's, it's like if, if whoever's singing wrote that. Yeah. Ah. So when Rocky's singing, like nine times out of ten, like he wrote that. Like, and we're trying to do that more because we feel like in, 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 in our process, the inception of the part, whether it's like a guitar part or, or a vocal part, we, we try to keep it as true to its um, inception as like possible. Is that for like emotional performance or what? Like honesty sake or it, just... Kind of authenticity, I guess, it, would be the word. But that kind of sounds... Yeah, I, I, honestly, it's, I don't even think it's like, oh, we want to like just try and be like our most honest selves. Like that isn't necessarily the thought, but it, I, th I think we find that um, when we do what he's saying, where it's like, all right, cool, like somebody played this part, that's who's doing it. We just feel like that's the most, um, that gets the, like the the most juice. Yeah, like <laughs> like then that part has the most life to it. Because we didn't like sit down, craft it for a while, change these words. All right, let's have someone cut it now. Let's like, let's, it's like, kind of all just, we usually try and just have it happen. And sometimes it bites us in the ass because yeah. sometimes there's mistakes in that process that we look back on and we're like, should we do it again? Should we do another take? Should we try to like iron it out? But honestly, we kind of like, how how yeah. it happens are, are you kind of like a raw yeah are you writing alone and then bringing ideas or like how does that work like are you ever sitting down and crafting a song together but we, we do both honestly mm -hmm. there's a there's a lot of time um where him and i was just literally would be like chilling in the backyard and we're like oh this is kind of a nice vibe we'll hop in the studio start just going to town um sometimes i'll be like rocky play guitar with me yeah. And we'll just sit in the backyard and we'll yeah. just like play guitar together. Yeah. How does number one fan start? Number one fan was a track that Rocky had produced up. Um and it was like this yeah. wild beat. And uh it was like electric. And and I we we just like pulled it up one day. I like to session surf, I call it. Because <laughs> we have like thousands of Go sessions in our, in our hard drive. So I just like session surf. And I try to find like a beat that maybe Rocky made, I made, we made together in the past. That's um. And you'll work off that. Yeah, whatever, whatever, like, whatever is like, oh my god, this is amazing, like, and, and it pulls me in. And number one fan is is a great example of that. And then, I think soon after we opened that session, I just started being like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Rocky was like, yo, that's nice. Yeah. And then it was just off to the races. But it is personal. So are you? Like, from whose perspective are you writing that? Is it from your perspective? Are mm -hmm. you somebody's fan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's honest. On, like, the most honest form of that song is actually t towards my girlfriend, Jasmine. As you are her number one fan? Mm-hmm. You it, guys but, are beautiful. But, but, it, it, but it... Like, that's 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 where the song started. And then it, it kind of takes on a life of its own. And it, and it, and it means... It has multiple meanings to me. It means, like... Obviously, I want to be her number one fan. She's like now releasing music and she's got her own acting career and she's amazing and super talented. And we definitely want to work with her in the future. Um, um, but it's also about being your own number one fan because oftentimes in art, you're, you can be your toughest critic and you can get in your own way. And um, even when we shot this music video, we had this whole like episode where we were like, I don't know, just trying to get this music video done. There should have been cameras rolling at that point. I know, <laughs> but we we were like got, kind of getting fed up, and we were just. Well, I mean, like you're saying, it's, some, it's sometimes easy to to get to a point where you're like, oh, you know, this isn't gonna work out or whatever, you know, like so. It it is it, you know it. it that song specifically, it is kind of nice to just be like, yeah. It, it, it just has like that under underlying tone of like, love yourself. Also, Vader's trying to get out. <laughs> Vader, bro. Hey, come here. You guys hold you? Come, come here, Come back Vader. up here. Come here. <laughs> Throw ass up Come here. here. I know you understand me, bro. Come on. He does. Come here. He's, he's very high maintenance. I, I felt. That's, that's some intense yeah. side eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he loves the side eye, bro. But it, it, to your point of like... It, 
doubting uh, doubting art uh, being your number one fan and having fans around you allows you the motivation and the fuel to keep going even when like times get tough or really hard mm-hmm. well e- there has have you felt like is music worth it have you felt like is this going to yeah. work out so yeah why do you do it because ultimately we find a lot of joy in in like just writing and producing music and and there's like there's moments that we that we get when you oh no <laughs> you might have to poop <laughs> 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 oh, serious he's whining at the door yeah I don't know. He might. Maybe, maybe let's have Rachel take him out. Yeah. There's a lot of smell. Let's just see if he stays. Wait, he's laying down now. Okay. Oh, beautiful, okay. beautiful man. Oh, you look so good right there. <laughs> yeah. Just stay right there. My dog's gonna be so angry when he sees this video. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be pissed. He watches all my injuries. He's a big fan. Oh. No, but to answer your question, we we find there's the, like these moments in the studio where we. Um. Oh. Sh- I had a great quote that I was thinking of the other day. We do it to witness magic. What is the magic when it works out? The magic is when you find something that, like a, like a, it could be a hook, it could be like a bass line, it could be like the song in general, but it, it literally is like ecstasy. What drives that? Is it everything meshing together like how do you know it's a good song and do you get the same it's, feeling every time a song's done no sometimes when a song is done it sucks because and that's what number one fan is about it's like i mean rock i don't rock is a little more stable than i am i've definitely had moments i just where act I'm like, like i am yeah it's hard man sometimes you definitely are like i don't need this this is emotionally tumultuous and i mean i don't know i don't like like i've definitely had moments where i'm like i think i'm i think that might be well, it that's because it's because you got a fallback career it's because i got acting. yeah you could just easily <laughs> like all right, let me go yeah. film something yeah but yeah. What you, like what is the uh, why though what's the hardest part about it like what are you not getting from this that y- you need to not have those thoughts does that make sense yeah 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 Honestly, I've been thinking about this recently. I think I could interact with my with the fans more, and that that might drive a little bit more of the sh- the the um, just like assurance that it's actually meaningful to some people. Yeah, you know. But it is, you know. Yeah, people request for you guys to come on the show all the time. And oh, cool. You're also, I think. You've lived a lot of life, and I think it's reflective in this this album. Truly, like you're clearly in love. <laughs> I mean, and that's also cool to write about and to keep kind of. Uh, it's like a unique diary, you know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes any sense. For sure. So interacting with fans would uh, make people be invested more, but you feel like they're not invested. No, no, no. Uh, I do. He, he, I'm just saying, like, like, the, okay. So there's this part of your brain. It's called like the seeking system, mm-hmm. and it's the part of us that. It's constantly wanting to learn new things. It's constantly wanting to explore. Um, and it's it's the thing that... It's the part of our brain that... <laughs> I'm totally talking out of my ass right now. But it's the part of our brain that... 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 I guess... Fills us with um, endorphins when we do learn something new or when we do... Um, conquer something or yeah. take on a new challenge that you figure out. Yeah, so I think I I guess if if I were to like I don't know reach out to fans more often and communicate with them and see how the music is reacting. I don't know. I, maybe it would like help silence some of those thoughts that. But that that's it's, not even a constant thing. Like the more the yeah. constant is like wow, I love music and I don't care who doesn't. Yeah, but it, like that, I mean, that's pretty cool to get there, yeah? yeah? Yeah, and sometimes you have to go down to the, like, the black hole to realize that that's on the other side. Yeah, and also realizing why you why you create something, which is for you and then for everybody else. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, number one fan obviously plays a role in your relationship. What is it like to share that song with somebody? It's kind of funny because I actually, we actually don't really play our songs <laughs> for yeah. anyone until they're out. 
We yeah. Uh, we I don't know. Why. Far, I was actually talking about this recently. Um, with Alex. Yeah. Yeah, because. And I was trying to explain it to her, and I couldn't really explain it. But I, um, I think, for how many times we like made a song or something, maybe played it for someone, um, and maybe not like gotten a reaction that you're looking for, or like somehow, it's it's just it's. I think in that situation, it's easy to be underwhelmed. Um, totally. And I think I, I I don't know how it came about, but I think we. What I was saying to Alex is I was like, I think I just try and protect my initial feeling towards the song um, when we were making it, when when it kind of was like coming together. And and at that point is when we're like, oh, yeah, this is like we're really we're ecstatic. We're just like, oh, this is great. Um, we and actually I, I had think a I moment. Protect it. We actually we actually oh. had a moment where where I was like, I think I was going through like one of the dips. Yeah. And I remember you saying that to me. What? You were like, nah, bro. You oh, were like, yeah. I'm on like, full protection yeah, mode. I was like, I'm on vibe control, bro. I'm not letting it happen. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because it's hard when you, when, you pour, when you pour love into something and, and, um, and it's like everything. And it's easy for people to just kind of shit on and, it. And it's, yeah, poke holes. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's not even like someone's like, oh, I don't like that song. It's just like uh, when we're in that position, there's like it's hard to not just like pay attention to every little thing that like someone is like doing while they're listening to a song, do especially you, if you like just made it. Do you mm -hmm. wish you had a set of ears that you trusted though? Or would you rather it's insulated? Yeah, I trust, his. Yeah, I trust his. yeah. Yeah. kind of like, and, and there still is like, um, you know, once we have the album together and all that, like it still is floating around between like BMG you know, our management and whoever else we were close with and whatnot. It's not like we're getting, like, negative feedback by any means. Yeah. But it's just that, you know, like, we're playing songs for, like, our family or whatever. Yeah. They listen to, like, country music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a completely <laughs> different genre. It's, like, not even in the same world. And they're like, yeah. this is my favorite song or, like, this. And it's you just kind of have to be careful. I don't know. I don't know. I Maybe it. it's, like, our past is R5. I don't, I don't know. But we are definitely precious and we've been working on it. Yeah. I don't know. And it's really just the two of you. You don't do sessions with anybody or anything like that. Not recently. Um, no, because there's been times where we're in sessions and we're really and we're onto something. And they like, like together throw it. And and the the third person in the room where it's like a blind date, you just met them, yeah. are trying to like do some something like more gimmicky maybe. Yeah. And we're just like, man, if you weren't here, this song would be like way cooler <laughs> you know but 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 we do want to collaborate yeah leave me feeling confident uh-huh quality song is that a saxophone at the end or what is that a sax yeah that Sick. actually uh the that horn part was ellington wow yeah. yo like he actually played the no he, he did it on like uh ableton he, push yeah he had like some i don't even know if it was that he like had some weird new thing he like someone sent him like this is like a couple years ago and it's like this weird like touch thing. And he was just messing around with it one day and started just doing a bunch of horn stuff. <laughs> he just put it in. We're like, this is sick. And then we actually just did a um like a little in studio live taping where we brought a saxophone player in and he mm. played the part. It was pretty sick. Also, but, congrats to Ellington. He just got married. That's yeah. right. Mazel tov. Which yeah. gosh. Weird is talking. We're the last two members of R5 that aren't married. Yeah. Which is insane. <laughs> That's All weird. the other three are married. Yeah. And one's got a kid. Wow. wow crazy that's time moves crazy yeah are you in a relationship yeah yeah you both are in you're, you're yeah. in something though yeah. mm -hmm. well that, i mean that's that, we haven't really been saying this but that's kind of why our album's called girlfriend yeah. like kind of yeah because because you learn a lot i mean i think men in general have a lot to learn from women oh yeah. Uh, yeah especially your your I, significant other I, yeah i definitely do mm -hmm. yeah. and we have learned a lot yeah and it's reflected in the album. But you're also like the only two in the group that uh, have girlfriends. Yeah. No fiancés or wives. No. no. Not not as of now. Yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> Don't f*** up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying, man. What leaves you feeling confident? What fuels your confidence? I mean, I was going to say just making a song, you know, like straight up. <laughs> I don't like if you get to a point where you're, where you're like if we just made something, 
and we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, that's probably the most. Um, oh yeah, that's probably where I feel the most like good. Mm-hmm. But how does somebody leave you feeling confident? Sex, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, know. I, <laughs> I mean, if they're telling you nice things, probably leaves you feeling pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Also, <laughs> <laughs> what what leaves y'all feeling confident? Yeah. Oh, I'm I can't tell you the last time I felt confident. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> been a minute though. Been a minute. I don't know. That's a good. I mean, it's a great question. That's why I asked it. Yeah, it is. Like compliments, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Compliments are pretty good. Sometimes yeah. it's there's they make me uncomfortable. Uh, also, sometimes yeah. I, I'm that way. And then sometimes Some, I think uh, like I have confidence from little dumb things, like not dumb things, like uh, yeah. somebody coming up to me on the street or something. Yeah. And then it's so fleeting. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever. Yeah, you're like, I'll never see them again. That's so weird, though. Like, like we crave compliments, but then when we get them, yeah. we don't like them. Yeah, I'm like, oh, thanks. That's so weird. Yeah. You know what makes me feel confident? When someone says you can't do something, your idea isn't good, and it turns out to be the right idea, or you actually turn out to be good at oh. something. Mm-hmm. It's like a confidence where nobody's yeah. telling you anything. You're just like, oh, proved you wrong. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, you suck it. Yeah. Kinda I like, like that. Kind of like when you're in the studio and somebody's like, that's not a good idea. The song ends up working. You're like, oh, well, look who's right. I yeah. feel it. I think that's a good way. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. I like the yeah, proving somebody wrong. Do you feel like you guys have that to do? Because like yeah. your musical history is like it's not super super long, but like it yeah. ain't short. Like mm-hmm. we met for the first time, I think like probably nine years ago. Yeah, eight years ago. So wow. yeah, it's crazy. That's pretty crazy. Time flies when you're existing. Um, <laughs> like, wild. But do you feel like you have people to prove wrong? Uh, that's almost yeah. It's kind of I guess it's kind of inevitable somewhat when it comes to like business like you like like people i guess you worked with in the past or even just like any like uh like previous thought you maybe thought people thought about your previous band hmm. so yeah there there is like a bunch of yeah, preconceived notions yeah and- yeah they're they're all yeah you, we almost have like a, a bit of a chip on our shoulder i guess it's like it's like hard not to um but I don't think we do I don't think we really do anything to try and prove someone wrong. Yeah, like, we can't we can't make music from that sp- space. Yeah. Like whenever we're making music, it just has to be like, woo, life's good. Yeah. You know? Even though it's not always good. Are there songs about life not being good, but they all I don't know, the first yeah. half is pretty peachy. Yeah. So like are you afraid to tap into I don't know. Something that's more sad, something that's more, I don't know the right way to, uh, realistic is not the right you. word because happiness and peachy is reality too, mm-hmm. but both sides of, you know, the way we, we yeah. operate. Yeah. Like, Beautiful Girl is a beautiful song. It makes me feel good, even though I'm not a girl, but it yeah. makes me like, God, it makes me want beauty in somebody. Mm-hmm. And it it leaves me with a smile on my face. Sure. But like, there could be a whole other side to that that's way darker. Well, you know yeah. what's kind of funny is... I, f- I think we kind of like to hide that. We like to hide the, a, like, a little bit of that in some of the songs because to, to Beautiful Girl is that is a little bit more of a realization of, like, um, something not so good, somewhat. It's a, it's a, it is a little more um, of coming to terms with, like, how things are. And that is, I don't like. Will it change? Like, so, I think I th- I do think we we we. I don't know if we do it on purpose, but I think we kind of like to just like sneak them, sneak some of the emotion emotional stuff in there. And I I I I feel like you if you you almost have to dive in it to kind of like yeah, find a couple it. layers. I yeah, like I, because I, I I don't really think Ross and myself are are very like. I, I like. I don't think we like wake up every day and we're just like, let's yeah, like you know, there there. There's highs and lows. Yeah, yeah. You know, we do our standard. Yeah, highs and lows. Um, but I do try my best to um be aligned with positive emotions. Yeah. I do. I try my best, but but I'm definitely sensitive. Rocky's definitely sensitive. Yeah. I think we're all sensitive. You have to be sensitive. Artists, they, they they're not numb. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. does love factor into this body of work? Yeah, because it's mm-hmm. about girlfriends. And mm-hmm. are you in love in a way you haven't been ever before? 
Yeah, you can you? say that. Yeah, for sure. I uh, for sure. What what makes uh, it different? But you? Uh, I mean, I was <laughs> literally the last like couple of interviews we've been doing. I'm like, you know what? I've I've finally realized that I just like what I am. I need to discover or just get better at is is like the relationship. Is, is is how to navigate the relationship and how to navigate love and how to navigate the opposite of love and how to navigate, you know, a- any feelings of uh, wh- whatever isn't love, like a- any feelings that could be negative in a rela- like that's what I'm I'm learning, I to get, be honest, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like not to run from situations. Sure, literally, the, anything that has to do with sadness, anything that has to do with your significant other. Is what I have been like <laughs> learning a lot. There's a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I felt like I, I, I thought I knew, <laughs> but you know, you know how that goes. You're you like, never know God, anything. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I, I've, I've been kind of like, honestly, the last like month, I've just been like spinning, yo. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even know. Like, this is holy actually crap. therapy. Yeah, like, I bought, a, I bought a vape. Holy, <laughs> really. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's like, how that's, you know that. That's what that's I'm saying. Bad. And that is not me. So, well, yeah. Yeah, we just came from hockey. We can't be vaping and playing hockey. Exactly. Oh, my God, you're going to pass out on the ice. Hold on. Seriously. So, are you paranoid and stressed out because you could do something wrong? Like, what is fueling it? A commitment? <sighs> I mean, it's weird because sometimes if, if, like, you look up the tendencies of a Scorpio, it, like, matches... Like, if you look at the negative tendencies of a Scorpio in a relationship, it's literally me. It's the weirdest. <laughs> I'm like, Are you Google a Scorpio? It. <laughs> yeah. It's the weirdest. Rattle that down? Yeah. That's so it's, awesome. It's so fun. And so, like, I'm, like, reading that, and I'm like, what? Like, what? Okay. If I, that is kind of my, I do have those tendencies. But, like, what? Like, wh- <laughs> why does that make sense? I can sense? just Google it? And yeah. I know now? Well, yeah. yeah, astrology is moon and stars. Yeah. It's amazing. Crazy. It's, they've been around far longer than all of us. Yeah. Longer than religion, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 100. Right. Yeah. I, I like I mean, astrology. I would say so. Yeah. I would say. I would hope. I mean, was it? There's no star, no moon, no sun back then. <laughs> I mean, that'd be weird. Like, right? Like, they, right. We have to go. We have to start with something. Yeah. 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 But it, it makes you realize and then want to get better. But uh, that's what I would hope it would do. But instead, you bought a vape. So <laughs> the internet tells you exactly who you are. <laughs> in a relationship and your coping mechanism is to not fix well, it i i guess okay like me, me you can be proactive right now yeah like <laughs> okay it's it's not that like uh like the vape happened because i was like oh let me like cope with like my situation it's just like i guess like if you take like all right like uh, my what's happening in my relationship and maybe just like like whatever's happening in my life right now has just been a bit of like a whirlwind it's just kind of where I've been at. It's just I feel been a little hectic. Too. It's like, you know, you got album coming out. Um, obviously, you got the whole pandemic stuff. Um, you, uh, Our mom has had some crazy stuff go down recently. It's, it's just like a bunch. Like, it's just been kind of crazy. It's yeah. It's so like, but enough life to write another album about? Yeah. Honestly, there's been always about something that. to write yeah. about. Well, yeah. You got to like live. you guys have a lot to write about from what I've been hearing. In the last <laughs> we, 10 minutes. We, we've been working on a lot of dance music, actually. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it's, we got it's like, it's pretty sweet. Uh, we'll show you. Yeah, please. Yeah. It's weird. Like, you know, I really do think of you as a rock star. Like, watching you on stage is such a, like, I, it's a pleasure. I like, agree. It's, it's, God, I've said it before. Like, you putting on a live show is I, impeccable. I, I agree. Like, you yeah. leave everything out there. Thanks, Why man. do you think I'm not a solo artist? <laughs> <laughs> Holy. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of weird to hear, like, being two years from the stage because it's, I mean, I don't have any doubts or anything. Like, I'm a pretty confident guy. To get back up on there? No, I'm just like, people have just like said that to me a few times. And I'm just like, really? You don't see it? You don't, I mean. I got, no, I'm just like having just fun. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just in the moment. I like get flashbacks. I think you performed at the Shrine or something. down Like some like weird downtown venue. Like some big, it's like a, was it, it wasn't the Shrine. Where did was you perform in Staples? L.A.? Was kind it, of, was yes. It, uh, oh, Nokia it looked, Theater. Nokia Theater? Or? Yeah, was it Nokia Theater? I thought it was a... Maybe. I don't know. Whatever it was, I remember seeing this show so vividly. I was watching from the corner. I was like, holy... <laughs> that was wild. That was sick. It was sick. Sick. It was sick. <laughs> I guess it was Nokia Theater. Why did I think it was like a... 
giant gymnasium or something. I mean, I'm I'm totally <laughs> guessing. I'm horrible with venue names like, and or when we no Kia Theater sounds familiar, but that might have been a while ago. Yeah. R5 was definitely in existence then. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we play Nokia as R5. Yeah, Nokia Theater. Yeah. Probably. W- do you wow. like sharing the responsibilities creatively between the two of you? Is yeah. It easier yeah. to manage? Yeah. I think... We just work well together. Yeah, it's like... I don't know. Yeah. It, we we like... Like, our, our music preference is... Um, it's never often that I'm like, yo, I, I was messing with this song. Like, I like the song. Ross, like, I hate that. Like, it's, it's we, we have very similar approaches to music and just how we like, like what we f- with. At this point, it's like there's so much magic that has happened. We, we almost have a service. We, we have to, we, we have to service those songs or else we're doing a disservice to ourselves. Yeah, I get it. It's there, like you can do it, so you got to do it. Yeah, and because like 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 we'll be in the studio sometimes. We're just like, I've never heard anything like this. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's like we're just like just if, dancing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's fun. How much are you sitting on? Like, do you have songs that are finished that you could release if you want? It's Arguably. usually we don't finish a song until it's like someone's like, we need some. Sh- we need an album they're like all right we kind of like go on and do it but we're sitting on like probably like 50 to like 100 songs of just like interesting maybe they're maybe they're like some songs are at like 75 percent, and some are at like 25 it's kind of the songwriter's yeah, curse yeah, yeah. Like, like most most songwriters are like that they probably just aren't like honest you know, about it it's so crazy because i've had a thought where i'm like if you don't have like a hard drive full of just like random ideas like yeah it's like what do you you're probably Are just, you just not in not the studio writing. And then yeah. I've seen something. I, I want to say it was Calvin Harris that was like, I never write a song I don't finish. Mm. So yeah, no, a lot has, of artists are like that. Yeah. And it's like, I understand the benefit of that. Like if for some reason a while back we were like, all right, you know what? These like 12 songs we just started last week, we got to put, the, we're just, let's finish. And just started like working yeah. our way up. You, we probably could have done that, but it's like, I don't, I don't like, now we have like a situation where it's like, all right, cool. It's like, let's put out some music or put out an album, and we have like this, we have like a, a prospect pool to pull from. Yeah, and you can pick the best. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're just like, oh, you know, I was vibing this thing we messed with like two years ago, and we can just grab it, pull it up, start messing with it. All of a sudden, you have us from from twenty twenty one working on it and doing whatever the whatever we feel at that point, and it is, and then we start going. You know, it's wild. Like you bring up like Calvin Harris, and yeah. everybody does have like their. There's similarities to everybody's approach, but ultimately, like, I think a lot of it has to do with, like, how one creates. Like, Tiesto has the same sort of mindset. There's a lot of producers that, like, if you do a session with them, you need to leave the room with some sort of song. a rough something, you know? Like, Which like, it's is, wild. that's the best way to go about it, probably. It, it's, well, because it's regimented, but yeah. also, like, you don't leave any room to breathe, and then you feel like the pressure of the clock is always ticking. Yeah. I think John Lennon said that, too. He's like, just, it, as long as you, he's like, just finish it. Yeah. He's like... Talk about pineapples, I mean, or or, or like there there there's like this video where like George, um, what's his name? I cannot believe I just said that. George like, Harrison. Yeah, <laughs> George Harrison was like trying to finish something, and he's like something in the way she moves attracts me like uh, and they couldn't find that part. And John Lennon's like in the other room, just like a pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> it's super funny, but uh, apparently he, his philosophy too was like. Doesn't matter what you say, just finish the song. You can tweak it later. Yeah, you'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Like just in workflow, you know, mm-hmm. for anything. Yeah. So you guys have songs from the X era that you'd go back and revisit, or do you feel like since it's two, three years old, that like it's time to move on? There's a song that we love from that time. It's called Friends, and it's so like, it's so punk. It's like punk hip hop. Oh. I'd love to release that song. But why don't you? Don't you really call your own shots? Yeah. So why wouldn't you release it if you want to release it? Honestly, I feel like if we were struggling it's, more, we probably would release yeah, more it's, music. It's, if they forced you to. <laughs> like if we had to make bills or something, like, I don't know. Maybe we need to buy more expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's it, that is honestly the, the question that we ask ourselves often. Where we're like, all right. like. But I think that's also what makes our music special is it's not forced. Yeah. And it, and it does come from a place of like, 
true inspiration. We're ready to put love into whatever we're working on. And if we're not, we just don't work. Mm. But we're also only going to release music when somebody comes to collect the bills. <laughs> When somebody goes, we paid Maybe. you money, and you need to help pay that back. <laughs> yeah. Or however it works. Honestly, yeah, we we could we could be better about that situation. Um, and we've kind of, we've talked a bunch. We're like, you know what? It would probably help if we weren't in LA. If we just like went somewhere for like a couple of weeks, we could probably wrap a full mm. album. If we just didn't have the distractions of LA, or sure. so, somehow th things get in the way. And it's, it's, I think also we tend to. Um, we tend to put like one song can kind of like take up a lot of space in our being. Yeah. So like if we end up getting close to finishing one song about, by, by the time that song's being mixed and by the time it's being mastered and stuff, sometimes it can like, it can just take a lot out of us. It can linger. Honestly. Yeah. It, Which it, song off the album would you say did that the most? Uh, honestly for me, it was maybe, <sighs> I was gonna say it was maybe when you need a man, but it's uh, it's tough. This there. I'm gonna say number one fan. Is that because you wanted to just get it perfect? Yeah, like then even like even after we've released, I haven't listened to it because it takes me about a year to be able to listen to a song. Why is that? Because you want to change it after it's done? Yeah, or? like like yeah, like yeah. You I could tweak some things. Yeah. You always, there, but you uh, yeah, always, always. It's yeah, it's, it's never ending. Um. That's but so then, like, a year afterwards, you'll, like, stumble upon your music, and you'll be like, oh, yeah. You know, sp <laughs> speaking of other artists, I've heard, uh, I want to say it was Tam and Paula that said something funny like that, where, like, he's, like, walking down the street, and he hears, like, uh, I want to say it's the less I know, the better. Just, like, playing in, like, a restaurant, and he, like, hadn't heard the song in, like, a year. And he had, and, it, like, it came, I want to say it was, like, when it kind of came out, um, or, like, song. right after it kind of came out, and he's, like, so yeah, he's someone that like just hadn't listened to the song for whatever reason. He like, and that's a that's a pretty big song. Big song, yeah. great song. It's awesome. Yeah. It makes. I mean, I get it. Like, it's very personal to you when you're doing it. It yeah. weighs on you to get it right because it's so personal. And yeah. gosh, once it's out there in the world, you know you can't fix it. So why would you ever listen to it? And the last time you listened to it, you yeah. were able to fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can change it for live shows. Honestly, a lot of times, yeah. When, once we get into like the live setting, we like to just and have fun with it throwing some guitar solos or what, like what we'd like to go ham with it that used to be one of the precious factors though of of kind of hoarding the music was being like well worst comes to worst this song becomes like our biggest song and then we got to play it for years <laughs> you know <laughs> is like that, that a fear of yours i mean it, I, I it might maybe was a thought in the back it's fun it's head. like one of those things where like <laughs> it could be a fear but it should be. It a, should be a good thing. Opposite. It's a goal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. God. You know what? We've been. That's you'll, the thing. You'll carp, uh, de whatever. You put that in a box somewhere. Real easy when the, you see the checks that that song could bring in. Yeah. But it's not about. I mean, like, it's not about money. I mean, I don't. I don't know. It's true though. It isn't about money. It's about the art that matters. And then if, a, yeah. like, dude, a hit song is like a tennis ball underwater. It'll always rise to the top. That's what they say. Well, you look back I like at that saying. Yes, I like that. Ex, was that one again? I've never heard that. I, you know, <laughs> call, call, call a, me off guard. An old person said it to me the other day. <laughs> I like that. That, that sounds like an A and R definitely sent you that. Yeah, yeah like an old guy, like yeah, an, old an old guy old who has like the coke shivers. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tennis uh, a hip song is like a tennis ball yeah. underwater. No matter what, it's gonna come to the top. Oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I like sense. that. Sure. Mm. That's nice. Yeah, I do like that. Okay. Well, well, what do you guys think when you listen back to Preacher Man? Would you change anything about that, or do you still like how that sounds? Well, that that's the that's the only song in the Driver Air's history that we actually had the least amount of control over. Yeah. Uh, we at that point we were still um, you were at Hollywood. we were still signed to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So and that song came out. Um, I want to say we would like the our deal we worked out where we split, and then we put out. I want to say Afterglow came out mm -hmm. independently. Right after that, I think. Would um, you have not released mm -hmm. Preacher Man or if, uh, Preacher Man if you could? No, I think it's great. At, at once this once the song's been out, and it's usually like, oh, we're, we're like, we're like, oh no, everything it doesn't even matter. We're just like, everything should be out at that point. We're like, it, yeah, yeah, we're like, no, for sure, Preacher, like all that should have come out. Yeah. Are you today looking back happy that you gave up control when it relates to that song, or? Do you learn something from making that that allows you moving forward to have more control and I don't know handle the situation better? 
Because, like, I mean, you seem like independent people. I don't think you'd like it, to sit in a studio with somebody and they're telling you what to sing. Preacher Man was uh, the reason why, like, uh, basically, R R five ended up stopping and becoming the driver is because Preacher Man came around and everyone on our team, everyone at Hollywood was like, "All right, like, this is like a this is the radio song. You got to cut it. Like, we got to like make some change around now ish." And that's when. Um, you know, there was like, there's, there's a couple meetings where we were at Hollywood, like, all right, like having a meeting about changing the band name. There's like a meeting and everyone was still there. And we, like, there was like names thrown around. I can't even remember what they were, but, um, and then after like a month or so of like that process working out, I just got to a point where I was like, all right, we can't even, we can't just like have the same band and be like, Hey, we're, we're we are now whatever the name would have been like, so and then it got to the point it is now. Um, well, because we were just, we were the ones spending all the time doing it. Yeah, because we, like. Well, and and once, as we're here now, it's it's obvious that it it should have gotten to this point because everyone has their own interests. Like, um, and we, I, I want to say, we might even talk about this last time we're here, but like, you know, Rydell, uh, she loves YouTube. She That's her gig. She, she doesn't want to write music. She doesn't care to write music. Um. You know, and, and, you know, Riker, he likes doing, uh, he's a little more, I mean, he does music still on the side as well, but he, he wants to make videos. He wants to make movies. He wants to do that kind of thing. And Ellington still does music as well. Um, which we're always in up Ellington. We're always trying to get in the studio with him. Um, but it, it makes the most sense to where we got now. I, it probably, there, there was, I don't really think there was another option. This was, yeah, this is, it almost, it. yeah, yeah. Preacher Man's a good song. I had no idea that you didn't have much of a hand in making it. Yeah. It, it. It's definitely a good song. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. great song, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, so long ago. Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking? I had a question in my head and it just completely You literally it. were about <laughs> to say it. I know. Literally He's thinking about that tennis ball right now. Yeah, I was thinking about the tennis ball. <laughs> He's like, why is it rising? <laughs> oh, well, that's what I was going to ask. Why did you guys split up the album kind of in like two parts? It's just kind of how it happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, for a while, we were thinking um, the f the future of music and the way that people consume it is on a track by track basis. Um, so we were thinking we were just going to release tracks as they came out. As as we completed them, we'd put them out. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I guess we just had a, just we just had a group of them, and we thought. Might as well yeah. group them together, right? I mean, we we knew a tour was coming up. Obviously, we had management in our ear, like, "Hey, like, finish some tracks. Like, let, like, we got to put something out before this tour." And normally, we're normally he's coming back from filming something. We're rehearsing at the exact same time, which this is what was happening right before the pandemic. He had just finished filming. We were rehearsing and trying to wrap a bunch of songs at the same time, and like it was super hectic, super hectic. And then I was like, "Oh, the tour is canceled." Boom! And then we just kind of took a break. Um, started putting out just kind of a song like we'd finish a song we're like all right let's like let's put it out we did that for a second um and then it, it just uh, it just got to a point where we're like all right let's we got some songs out there we let's we want them to live on something like on like a package so like let's just make it a two-part it just yeah it just like almost like we're filled banned. itself in yeah interesting did you yeah. i mean do you like the way it played out like would you do it again i actually love the way it played out yeah it, it i yeah. love the i love the album cover I love, I love that the album name, <laughs> and I and I'm I'm really stoked about all the songs that ended up on this record. Um, I feel like it's some of the best work we've done to date, and it really gives um, our fans a little peek into like what our hard drive looks like. <laughs> By the way, listen to the album. There's a link in the description below. Just click it. Go peep it. Ear. it. Totally deserves your ear. What do you want people to walk away with after listening to it? What I've been saying recently is that we pour a lot of love into the music that we make. So hopefully people just feel that and it um, influences them throughout uh, their life. I, I mean, ultimately, yeah. to soundtrack their life would be sweet. Like, If you want to listen to it on the daily, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean... But to feel the love that we put into it on, is on the a, ultimate yeah, goal. It, if one song in the album moves you i think that's that's kind of all i'm asking for if, yeah. if like if you can be someone that 
because that, that happens to me like someone will put out an album and like somehow I'll, I'll find myself on like one song and i'm like whoa this is something special and if someone can have rem- like anything close to that kind of re- reaction or exchange with a song that we've you know put some love into and created like that's something special i, I love that i love it what's Amen. what song off this album best captures where each of you are at today flash drive <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, that's like one of the later songs, but the whole th- the whole time it's just like I don't know. It's just I talking about cup, yeah. Bro. It's like till I feel love. Yes. I'm kind of joking, but it much. makes sense with the story we were saying. Earlier. <laughs> uh, that's a good song. That's a good song. If you haven't heard that one, that one's a good one. Oh, we've listened to the album. Oh we, yeah, uh, we got a freaking link. Yeah, dude, you did. I pointed <laughs> you the link. I don't. Th- I, I don't check your spam, bro. Check your spam. <laughs> Let me check the trash folder. Wait, you didn't, <laughs> no way. You didn't get the link. No, I mean I just have whatever is on Apple right now. I mean, I'm oh. on five or six songs, but oh, I have the whole thing. What is it? Fourteen or sixteen altogether? What I think it's it? fifteen. That's something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, the God. Yeah, yeah I was listening. I'll, I'll afford a teen ass. Whatever. <laughs> that represents me the most now. Yeah, it gave you some good time to think. Um, I think Heart of Mine probably. It's funny. I was actually, I was kind of like, yeah, I kind of feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Because time's moving real fast, man. Yeah. Good fast or bad fast? I mean, just life fast. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's mostly always good. Mostly. Yeah. Most of the time. Can't have good without the bad. Yeah. But you need a little contrast. I agree, but it's mostly good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it good? It's great. Man, we just played hockey today. Kick some yeah. 40-year-old's asses. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nothing better than that. <laughs> no, we actually, That's how we feel confident. We, we actually love our, our little hockey drop-in group that we got. It was great. We, we, uh, we set up a little grill after the game, and we had some beers, uh, cooked some hot dogs. It was uh, wonderful. You've been playing hockey at the same place for a very long time, right? In the oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. I've been playing for since I was three. Yeah. Jesus. We love hockey. Didn't you play with Justin Bieber? Wasn't he a part mm-hmm. of the group yeah. at one point? We, yeah, we, we played with him a few times. We played with him recently, actually. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty good. Yeah. He's There's good. only so many ice rinks in LA. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you got to yeah. go to the same ones. No, yes. yeah. He, he was dope to skate with, honestly. You know what? He's I good. actually was, um, it was really nice to see that he seemed like he was in a really good place. Oh. Mm. Like, that, that was my biggest takeaway from playing hockey with him. See, like, after the game, he like made sure and like went up to everybody and was like, he seemed real happy. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was, it was nice to see. Dude, he is, yeah, really special person in a positive yeah. place. And uh, yeah, the last few months, God, he's an incredible human. And yeah. Very kind and he exudes it and mm-hmm. incredibly grounded. And that's what love could do for you. That's mm-hmm. what a great partner has the ability to do. Bring the best out in you each and every day. While you hopefully bring the best out in them. That's what you should want in a relationship, no? Amen. I Amen. God. Love looks good on you, Justin Bieber. <laughs> You're missed. Um, you go, please. Well, a song that I haven't got to hear, but uh, why did you name Crazy Baby Crazy Babe E? <laughs> that, was, that was just what I called the session because uh, okay. like, I thought it was cheeky. Yeah. And then uh, when the song came to its completion, that was the same lyrics we were using, and I, I just thought it looked cool phonetically. I Catch, don't know. Catches your eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I really love that song, though. That's a that's one of the first songs as the driver era where we are both singing um lead vocals. Are y'all like are you nervous in that moment? Um or do you feel like this is your destiny? It's weird because <laughs> that <laughs> he was like confident ready to go. <laughs> I mean he's been watching you and waiting and plotting like take over. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of songs that Rocky sings though. Yeah, there's um Kind of like I was saying earlier is I don't do much writing or singing um, ever unless if somehow like I, I like I like I'm I'm in a place and it somehow just like comes out of me. But, but you, like I'm pretty reserved and I'm I'm I, you never hear me sing. I'm singing around the house. What is the place like 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 emotionally uh, in the right place? Yeah yeah yeah. Somehow somehow uh, like for in Crazy Baby for instance, I came home. Crazy Baby is a track Ross produced most of. He was he was he working on something. I came home was like, "Well, I like what I'm hearing." He was already um, he kind of had already sent like already had multiple of his parts in there, and I was just outside and I was like, "Oh, like okay, there's like this thing that's just like 
coming to me. Um, and there's some words there. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, Ross, like, here's like this thing. And he was like, record it, bro. And I was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I'm right. sick. I'm sick. I'm sick of like being like singing a part that he made up. And I'm just like, bro, you sound better singing your part. <sighs> Sing your part. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that now there's a song where there's two leads and. But then your truth, yeah. Yeah, it is. But, but I know we've been like talking about this, but, yeah. um, it is kind of like a spiritual experience yeah. writing music. Yeah. Because oftentimes it kind of feels like it's happening to you. What is? Like writing music. Like the, the yeah. There's, uh, it's so weird. That <laughs> just blew his mind. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I've, I've heard a couple of people say this. I want to say. Um, Billy Joel, I think, said it. And uh, I think Chris Martin. Mm -hmm. There's, they'll say funny things where they're like, yeah, you know. If you're in the right space the and, you got, and you got the, yeah, you got the, you know, the right vibe, like maybe you'll get lucky enough that like music will come in and say what up to oh, you. Dope. By the way, you are correct. And Chris Martin really believes that all of the songs are bestowed from a power above him. Yeah. And all of the hit songs he's had are not from him. He like thanks. He, he's a whole spiritual mm -hmm. theory mm -hmm. wrapped around it's, like Viva La Vida. Like, yeah. He's like. I think it started with the drums or the strings or something. He told the story on the show. He's like, it was bestowed upon me. That's yeah. the one that goes, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like it was given to me from the above. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honestly, it, yeah, I feel like if you write enough music or just any, if you write somehow, if you're doing a, a certain amount of like creative, artistic stuff, I, I think you will get to a point where you're like, whoa, like, like Chris Martin, where you're like, well, okay. How, like how did all that actually happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like like how was like? Yeah, it's it, honestly it's it's mind blowing. It's literally mind blowing to mm -hmm. us. Be open I to agree. receive. Yep. You gotta let go. You gotta you gotta silence the your brain. The fear. Yeah, you, it's like yeah. So you can't just sing on command. Does, does that make you afraid for when touring I mean, will resume? I mean, I'm like okay, I I. I can like if it's like oh we gotta play a show it's like oh here's this part I'm gonna sing but I'm not really just someone that's like uh, oh my gosh I love singing like I'm walking around singing oh I want to be an artist I want to be a singer I I loved making music I loved producing I love I loved just like um, everything about music that wasn't necessarily words or melody like even growing up I would always just be like oh this is like a cool guitar part and so every everything I did with music was normally um, like just like the instrumental side of it and that's and i would do that often i'd be working in the studio and then times would happen where ross would be like in vancouver he'd be off filming or something so i'm kind of the only one in the studio and i'd be doing my thing i'd be just making a track um and at one point i was like wait a second <laughs> what is it that i'm hearing right here and you know then it just kind of from there obviously happened more often and, and kept going and Damn. You know, now there's just like more than a couple songs that I happen to sing. Rocky's actually a great singer. He's just not a show off of a person. Yeah. Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> um, but your voice needs to be heard. Yeah. Living at your destiny. Mm -hmm. Boom. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. It's very cool to see you guys share that role. I, uh, it's pretty sick. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> you're also brothers, so it kind of also makes sense. Do you guys ever have to separate big brothers and bandmates or is it all kind of blend together it all blends together for the <laughs> most part do you yeah. want it to blend yeah i mean i feel like ross and i for for majority of our lives have been um like they're like we just uh, i feel like we've just kind of gotten along pretty well like not that it's like um like we didn't really like try to get along or like put t it's just like it's always been pretty like seamless and and um i think we just understand um each other's boundaries somewhat um not that we really have any but like i think i'm just kind of like aware of, of ross's ways and he's kind of aware of mine and we just it just kind of is like it's just like a little happy and we're like-minded yeah. yeah yeah and that awareness of like each other's quirks and knowing like what triggers each other allows you to kind of exist harmoniously yeah because mm -hmm. you yeah. know what minds to avoid yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't step on each other's toes. <laughs> he... And he's got a f toenail, yo. Do you? Is it from <laughs> yeah. hockey? It's from basketball. What the f <laughs> Who are you? Why he's are got you doing all this? He's Why do you need to crazy toenail, yo? What I is going on? I love sports. You don't need... No, <laughs> I shouldn't do that. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I lost. Bro. I mean, every time you hit the ice, it's a risk. I know, but I'm so it. good, bro. Imagine <laughs> up your face. <laughs> I wear a mask. Yeah, you, know, you never, you never say never. Justin Bieber quote. Um, what are you thinking? So you guys never and the rest of the never. family never talks about getting the whole band back together. That's just something that they're not interested in. Well, they come on tour with us. Okay, are they are they playing? Yeah. Oh. So so yeah, we're they, so they are the band still. Oh yeah. Are you kidding? When when the tour is happening, they're like, I'm there. Yeah. Like it wasn't even a decision yeah. to be made or anything. They're just like, I'm. Yeah. They're just like, that's my spot. Yeah. I'm I'm touring. What's yeah. up? Yeah, like Ellington not on the drums. That's weird, right? Well, Ellington well, actually is not. Really? That's, yeah. So yeah. We, we've we've been um. Sorry. We, so no, that's well, I mean, it's a little heartbreaking, but yeah, it's okay. We've been um, drum wise, we've been cycling through a couple different drummers, um, and they're all great, honestly. And then uh, bass. Riker still plays bass, and we honestly came to the. I specifically have come to the realization where it's like, honestly, Riker's a pretty dope bass player, and he like, he not only is going, um, he's not only going to hold da- hold down the bass line, um, he also uh, does a lot of like our, uh, our musical like, director, yeah, like our show setup, and like there's a lot that kind of goes on behind the scenes, w- whether it's with um. Uh, just like different parts and like working with uh, you know working with whoever is drumming and stuff so Riker does actually benefit a lot of that um and Rydell still plays keys because she honestly just doesn't want to miss out she wants to come on tour she wants to have fun um and she obviously is a great keyboardist um and like they all still want to perform you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. and it's cool that you still have keys and you have a full band yeah. I mean it's a lifestyle when we're on the road yeah it's like a, it's like a it's like a whole thing are are you excited to get back there? Oh yeah, for sure. We're excited to be because we're we're literally doing a whole like world tour again. Is that what you've been planning? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a whole states run, and then we do a European run, and then a South American. Is it announced? Run. Yeah. Why didn't I see that? I think most of it's announced. I don't think our Japan dates and our Australian dates. Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty. Well, November fifteenth. Yeah, Where November. The- U- yeah, it's U.S. and then yeah. Europe is like January. Mm-hmm. I think. And then South America's March or something. Wow. And then Japan and Australia is a little bit later that year. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Def- well, we just have always been able to tour. Yeah, you have been. Yeah. But I get it. We've never had like a big radio single, nothing like that. We've always been able to just... Hey, you sell tickets. Sell tickets. Yeah. People love you guys. And you have a fan base that's yeah. been around for a while. And uh, God, that's insane. Why did I not know it was announced? I feel like every time I see a tour... That is coming. I just don't like. I like. I. Di- it's like a part of me that like is like. Is this real? Is this actually happening? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This- well, yeah, because yeah. people are still canceling tours. And, Cancel- like, yeah, obviously, constantly. left and right. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. <gasps> oh, this is nice wood right yeah, here. It's quality wood. Oh, <laughs> you know. So, like, so with a tour, that means acting's put on hold for now. Yeah, for the most part, mm. there's not really anything happening in that world for me. That could change on on a, on a dime though, like in a win. Yeah. Win, whatever, whatever the phrase is. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm not. I, mad, I'm not mad about it. I've been thinking about acting recently. I honestly would like to be in an acting class, cause I don't want to like. People hit me in my inbox with like all this celebrity kind of stuff. Like, hey, come be like on this reality show, or like come do this thing as like a celebrity. No. Nah. Like Dancing and with the Stars? In that vein. Okay. In that vein. I was asked to do Dancing with the Stars like some years ago, and then Riker ended up doing it. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And freaking killed it, by the way. I don't know if you guys ever saw his Pirates of the Caribbean dance. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> he was full out. Maybe though. the best dance Dancing with the Stars ever had. I'm just saying. Said by you. Oh, for sure, I mean, yeah. it's quality. I mean, yeah, if there was like a vote put together, it might make like top five. <laughs> it's yeah. seriously dynamite. <laughs> Dude, they might have that. There's like middle aged women who That's are true. very There's passionate about There's like tons of yeah. websites with the top. They're dances. dedicated, like <laughs> yeah. forums, and they, like they all look like they were designed in 2002. Sick. But they're out there. <laughs> yeah, we should go peep that. <laughs> so, when's the last time you were on a set? The last time I was on a set was right before the pandemic hit. Oh I was doing the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Is that is has this been the longest you haven't been on a set? Yes. Like probably in decades, right? Yeah, the last time. Wow. The, well, that's what was so great about the <laughs> pandemic for me is I never had this much downtime since I was like 15. That's crazy. And I was soaking it up. I was like, yes. I love it. 
but but now you just want to act anywhere, literally in an acting class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I'm like more inclined to do like an off Broadway actors like thing than to do the celebrity thing. Is that the next challenge for you? Is doing something on stage? I mean, eight shows a week is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on it's Broadway. but it's but that's like. That's like the cream of the crop acting. Yeah. No, that's like the real test, right? You, mm -hmm. There's no two takes. But 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 the difference, the biggest difference is when you're doing a film, you show up to set that day and you get your little mini sides and you know your side, you know your lines and you run the scene like twice and then the cameras are rolling. When you do like an off-Broadway play or like just like one of those shows, you've probably run those scenes like 200 times <laughs> before anyone ever sees it. So it's literally in your body, and 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 um, you embody a character like you've never embodied one. before. Absolutely, and then you totally are just lost in it yeah. and, to the point um, where like each performance gets to be different for you, but you still know each other and where you're going and where to end. Mm -hmm. And that I I think that that I mean that's really what it's about. Yeah, you just perked up. You seem like thrilled. Like this seems like a a high for you. Yeah, I'd like to do that at some point, but 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 none of it scares you. No. 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 But there's, um there's comfort in a second take. But you can't do that on stage. It's sick. I like the stage. Yeah, I I don't want to be that guy but like I I've always believed that some of the best performers in the world start on Broadway and mm -hmm. start on this uh, on a theater stage because they you can't stop. Yeah. There's no stopping. Yeah, you got to always be on. There. But there, there's also no room for necessarily personal interpretation so you can't there's no room to banter to like like you can't riff to get somewhere like everything is precise and it's god man and you're lost in it yeah yeah and you're as a viewer it. you're lost in it too and that's mm -hmm. god nothing is better than live theater in my opinion and i grew up on it that would be pretty sick you I'd do that. it i love to do that sick. honestly i feel like because my last my last real acting um challenge i guess you could say oh uh, no i mean uh, was it Dahmer? yeah so the chilling adventures of sabrina was like definitely had its challenges and was definitely a good learning experience and i had a great time and i love that um the cast and the crew and everyone involved was amazing um i don't know i just feel like i just I, in the acting world i just i'm waiting for that role to come around where it's like oh no that's mine because oftentimes i'm auditioning for these things where it's like beautiful boy or like <laughs> this guy's got this guy's perfect or whatever and i'm like that's not me like there's a bunch of hollywood pretty boys that way more suit that archetype no you want you want jeffrey dahmer level you want yeah you know. want different it's, it's like when i when when dahmer came across my inbox i was like oh yeah no that's mine <laughs> like it just like you kind of you can't yeah, kind of sense it sense, but yeah. everybody look, from the outside looking in would have never been like oh it's gonna be his Disney Channel dude gonna go play a serial killer yeah. at his early stages? Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. That's what made it kind of like... It's amazing. Yeah, it made yeah. it like, whoa. The movie was so good. Yeah, it was fun. You it were, was fun. That was challenging. You were superb. I had uh, I had a little... um, I had like borderline wounds from that. Like just psychological like things I had to like get out of for a minute. Because you get into it. Yeah. You were with Al Alex Wolf was in that, right? Yeah, I learned a lot from Alex. Actually. He's Alex. I love you. I know you're out there. I love <laughs> you too, man. I miss you, bro. Hey, I like I like him a lot too. I'm not <laughs> as close, but, but he's, he's a good one. Did yeah. he? I know one of his techniques is that like he'll act as a character even while he's offset, and he'll go the like, whole film. We called each other. He called me Dahmer, yeah, and, and he, I called him Durf. The whole film. It gives you goosebumps he's the whole so time. Good. Literally, he taught me a lot actually because he didn't really. About what anybody thought about him, and a lot of people in like the crew got him. sick of him a little bit because he's loud and obnoxious. Because <laughs> that's kind of like the the character that he's being. He yeah, just yeah. never drew, he never drops it, and that's what creates um, that oh, his performance in the film. Honestly, is really great. Yeah. Um, but we actually shot this. We shot this scene that got cut out of the film because it wasn't accurate to what happened in the in the actual story of of Dahmer's life. Um, but like. After so, there's a scene where Dahmer goes to the mall and he's um he's like spazzing out. He's like trying to cause a scene. Um, and we shot a scene after that that wasn't accurate, so it didn't make the film. 
but we're in the car on the way back to like Dahmer's house. Um, and Dahmer starts freaking out. He's like, like just basically like you. Um, and literally right before we shot that scene, uh, Alex is in like the driver's seat. He turns around and he goes, pa, pa, and just like, like kind of, like he kind of hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the first time you? I ever said this. He just slap you. He hit me in the face. <laughs> what, did, what was his intention with that? What did he want out of that? Um, what did he want you to emote? Well, because Dahmer, Dahmer is was very much kind of like the in that scene specifically is like kind of like a wounded puppy, like, like yeah, like, like a broken, like a broken animal. Um, God, and uh, I remember when he did it. First of all, totally, I, I, it, like, it didn't even surprise me. I was like, yep, that's something Alex would do, no doubt. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, I remember it, it, like, it, it, it did exactly what he wanted it to do. Which was? It totally just got me, like, kind of fired up and kind of, like, resentful. Um, yeah, it was effective. Yeah. It, it was effective, and it worked, and, and I think he knew that I was okay with it. Totally. Your commitment to the role. You yeah. want perfection. You want it to be the best performance it could possibly be. So if it means punching in the face three times. Yeah. It's worth it. So can be it. And the director right. actually told us, he was like, actually after that day, we were all like, damn, that was like some good acting. Like we were all like kind of feeling good about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the director, after he like made the first edit, he's like, that scene didn't make it, but <laughs> you guys really killed it. <laughs> he's like, really like, but it, it just wasn't, it didn't work in the story. It wasn't accurate. Mm -hmm. After you play a role like that, how do you kind of get out of it then? It took me a, little, it took me a second. Um, just like... Just to like... Uh, just like resume being Ross. Because I'm like pretty lighthearted. I like to make people laugh. You're peachy, yeah. bro. Yeah. Positive. I like to have a good time. <laughs> you um, are not Jeffrey Dahmer. You're far from Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you guys have in common? Just kidding. <laughs> Blonde hair. That's about it. <laughs> well, Rocky, what's it like for you as a brother to watch your brother play a serial killer? Because it's a movie, like I guess I don't like. I don't like. Think this it's, guy like, loves horror crazy. films. Yeah, like I, I like scary movies. Like He's Malignant. Let's go. You guys seen Malignant? <laughs> no, Have you seen that movie? I heard it's good though. Yo, it's kind of crazy. Uh, but no, actually, you know, we were, I was one of the first people to see the movie. Yeah. Because um, we were in New York. Yeah. I was doing this. Um, you were doing a Broadway I was doing thing. an off-Broadway yeah. thing with Adam Shankman. Yeah. Um, they were trying to put 17 again on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. How and many performances did you end up doing of it? We did like three, maybe three performances. And like, it wasn't a lot. So like before preview stages of it? or was it Yeah, like, it was yeah. before previews. Cool. Yeah. Um. But we were out there in New York, and uh, we ran into Alex. We ran into Mark Myers, who directed the film, and uh, he was like, "I got an edit." Yeah, we were at dinner, and he was like, "You guys want to yeah. come watch it?" He's like, "You." Want it was like that was like 10 yeah. p.m. He's like, "You guys want to come watch yeah, the movie?" Like, we're like, "Yeah, that's sick." Oh, we were in Ellington cool. too, so it was. Oh yeah, Ellington. In Ellington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the first people to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was sick. That's pretty cool. God. So you had a taste of Broadway, off Broadway at least. It was. Stage. It, it was. It, I mean, we were just in the ballroom. Like, it's just, like, a little ball. But, like, it, you... That's the process. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see how those things come to be. Because you're right. You end up doing it hundreds of times before you actually hit the stage or see an audience. Mm -hmm. It's wild. It's crazy. What are you thinking? Well, the one other question. Were you bummed when Sabrina was canceled? I actually remember telling all my castmates, this is it. You knew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, six months before, like, um, before we left. How or why? Mostly intuition. From experiencing that before? No, I could just I could just kind of feel it. I was like... Mm. I didn't really know why, but I just had a feeling that this was going to uh, be the last did one. Did you guys, like, end... Like, was the last episode, did it, like, resolve? No, no. The, like our, the, creator, <laughs> the creator of the show was, like, so bummed that the show ended. Because the show ends with Sabrina and and Nick. Spoilers. Lover. Spoiler. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> serious spoilers um dying oh. and oh. and that's that's not how the creator wanted it to be at all oh so he was like pr he was like really begging netflix or warner brothers i can't remember which to um 
give us like eight more episodes, ten more episodes. Just, just a small out, stint to yeah. like round out all the storylines. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, that's business. I, wasn't it yeah. supposed to be a part of a larger universe? Yeah, I think they were trying to do a, like an Archie Comics universe yeah. because Riverdale obviously is like such a success. And and honestly, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is totally underplayed for how well it did. It was yeah. a, it was a massive success on Netflix. Every time it came out, it was like, you know how they had like the little top ten sticker. <laughs> it was up there. Oh yeah, every single time. There's also like a massive petition to get it back on the air with like yeah. five hundred thousand mm -hmm. likes or signatures or whatever it is. Wow. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. I think yeah. now wow. that it's been like two years, it's a little far fetched because mm -hmm. yeah. honestly, there was a lot of really like cream of the crop actors on that show like like M michelle gomez like like just there's like just a lot of like yeah they're on to other things already like they're doing big things you know and do you and jazz live together not really we c we we have our own places but we spend the night a lot <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, sleep in the same bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's. I mean, that's special to come out of that too. You know, you met somebody. Yeah. yeah. The writers actually wrote our characters together because we had such chemistry. It's wild. Yeah, and you totally see it on the show. In my opinion, do you remember the first time you met her? Yeah. Yeah. Where were you? It was. Um, Dude, for some reason, I booked that show. It was like such a quick turnaround. I booked it, and they were like, "Cool, you're flying to Vancouver in like two days." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." I, it, it happened so fast, I couldn't really process what was going on. I was gonna be in Vancouver for the next two years. I had no idea, so I was like on set. I was meeting everybody, and I was just thinking, "Okay, what's up? Hi, nice to meet you." I didn't really think anything of it. I don't know why. Um, and then like ten months went by, and I was like, "Holy crap! I've been here for a long time." But yeah, no, I met her um, <laughs> at the sexual harassment seminar. <laughs> but so that's where you meet her for the first time? Yeah, I think so. Because that was like, literally, that was the first time we were all in the same room was for the sexual harassment seminar. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. <laughs> that's, now y'all are happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's uh, probably the smartest woman I know. Hopefully your mom doesn't hear that. Well, my mom is super smart. Jasmine has different wisdoms. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like you're the best version of yourself when you're with her? Yeah. I mean, I like a lot of versions of myself. I like the version of myself when I'm with her a lot. Does she push you to be the best? She does it in such a way that's not... Pre it's not pressure. It's, it's, like, it's like pleasant expectation where she's like, no, no, no. You're great. It's fine. Just be great. Feels good. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like reassurance to believe in yourself. Number one fan. Yeah. I like that. Boom. Listen like that. to the Driver Era's new album. Link in the description below. Are you good? Cool you got it all? Gosh. We did. We covered a lot. Talked here. about a lot. I yeah, feel like every time good. we come in here, we're just like gabbing. You all make it's me nice. very happy. It's like therapy. Yeah, it's nice. I, I feel like I got a lot off my chest. I feel like this isn't for the internet. I thank you both for coming and hanging out and maybe you'll okay. curb your your vape habit by the next time we see <laughs> I mean each other. okay I don't actually have a vape habit okay, I just happened to, I bought one which is that, that already, you started to have it yeah I mean I haven't gotten there yet but okay just, how often do you do it in a day I don't have one now ooh yeah. it's a past thing already yeah yeah look at I've that. moved on really yeah but does it like does it is it in the garbage <laughs> yeah it ran out <laughs> it ran out <laughs> it ran out oh, I was like, no. I all right. Caught. Click uh, the link in the description. Listen to the Driver Error's brand new album. Please, 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 please. Girlfriend or girlfriends? Girlfriend. 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 Yeah. No S. That's right. right. Driver Error. Ross and Rocky. Yo, thanks for having us, y'all. Thank you. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore. So we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications. And all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.